Hello friends, I hope you're doing well. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Today we're going to revisit the sky in one of my earlier paintings. I like it, it's a fine sky, but I think we can make it look a little more exciting, more interesting, and we'll talk a bit about how to do that. So if this is your first time here or you've been here a hundred times, go ahead and subscribe and like this video if you haven't already. But most importantly, share it with someone who you think might benefit from these fundamentals. If you have a question about something specific, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to address it. I'm Kendall Stump and welcome to The Stump Project. All right, let's jump right in. Um, you see, I'm, I'm zoomed in on the painting just a little bit. I'm not showing the bottom part of it because we're primarily going to be focusing on the top. And as a matter of fact, I can probably get in a little bit closer for you guys. There, that should help. Um, so what I want to do, I want to make the sky a little bit more interesting and we're going to be using the really limited color palette to do that. Um, I'm, I'm going to, uh, to darken up the sky a little bit more on the top, a little bit more contrasting up here. Uh, and then not so much as it comes down here. Um, and the reason why, again, w when we look at, at skies, you know, we're looking up, right? So the, the, the more up we're looking, the more these clouds are over, are over our heads. So we should be looking at it as a plane of perspective that's going, that's going back. So the, the, the closer things are to the viewer, the darker they are, the more contrasting that they're going to be. So, and that's going to add some interesting stuff to the sky. Now, what I, how I want to do that is I don't want to just put in black. I want to make my own black. We've done this in the past in other videos. Uh, we're going to mix what's called a, a chroma black. So this is going to be pretty close to that. It's probably not going to be a true black. Um, we'll start with the colors here and I'll explain to you what I mean. So here we've got um, burnt sienna, Prussian blue, yellow ochre and titanium white. Now obviously we're not, I'm not mixing all of them together to make this, this black, but I am going to mix the blue and uh, the, the Prussian blue and the, and the burnt sienna uh, together to do that. So we're going to take, we'll take a bunch, we'll take a, a blob of burnt sienna. Oh, before, before even that, I, I covered this part of the canvas up here with liquid, and this is just going to help uh, help this additional layer dry uh, in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, so I'm just going to take, now Prussian blue is pretty strong, and I don't want to overpower it with a blue hue. I would like to get it as neutral as possible. And we're going to add this to the, to the burnt sienna. Now I don't even mind I mean, and I may even add some yellow ochre to this. I don't mind if it has a, a green hue. If you look at some of the of the sh of the shadows, like some dark shadows, uh, dark dark shadows in here. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's got like a, a little bit of a green tint to it anyway. So I, I'm not opposed if it if it takes on a a little bit of a greenish hue. This is a tonalist painting, so I'm fine with that. So the, as you can see, that there's there's many ways to put together a, a chroma black. Um, last time we did it with um, alizarin crimson and phthalo green. That makes it really nice chroma, chroma black. And this time we're using burnt sienna and Prussian blue. Now that's not necessarily on the popular list of things to mix for a chroma black, but that's okay. See, it's nice, nice dark. I don't want just, just plain old, just plain old black. And you see, I'm, I'm applying this with my, with my palette knife. And if we need to end up making more, we'll, we'll end up making more. And the reason why I'm applying it with my palette knife is I'm just, I'm, at this point, I'm not trying to mix it on the canvas. I just want to get it on the canvas. And, and a palette knife will let me do that relatively quickly. Just, just troweling it up there. So 
So I want to try and, and treat this kind of, you know, we've done perspectives before, like if, you, if we chose a vanishing point somewhere here on the horizon or just above the horizon, the base of the clouds, and things would, could point to that, to that thing. It kind of adds to the perspective and the idea of it. Now I want to take a, a fan brush. I just want to just soften the edges here just a little bit. Since it's up here, I can kind of dance it around so it doesn't look like a, a knife just troweled it on. Right what I'm looking for right now is just some some randomness that kind of makes sense and then I'm going to soften this so as this as these points come together or as these points come come down into the painting I want them to come together a little bit uh, at least at the very least I want them to point towards each other uh, because of that perspective. I want to give it that feeling that it's, that it's going away. It's going off into the distance. And then we'll just, to maintain the, the colors and the tones, I'm just going to put this, the same tone elsewhere in the painting, just to make sure that we are being uh, adding to the continuity of the color I want, I want them to feel homogenous and you notice I didn't take my brush I didn't dump uh, dunk it back into the paint I just I'm just moving paint around at this point which is nice because it's going to allow me to, to, uh, to thin out maybe areas that I thought were maybe too dark and play with the, with the contrast just a little bit. And then I'll be able to go in even more uh, with the, uh, the yellow ochre and, and, the, and the white. Just adding some of that color. Remember, the closer you get to the horizon, things tend to lighten up. Uh, so we have this, this lighter band through here, and then of course the horizon line. So I'm just I'm just wiping off. I'm not going to clean my my brush. I use uh, odorless mineral spirits to clean my brush generally. Um, I'm not doing that this time. I am um, I'm just wiping off the extra paint and I want to go into my yellow ochre just a just a smidge tiniest tiniest bit. See I'm not I'm not gonna put much on there at all and I want to add some of that yellow ochre right in here and then when I add the white uh, that'll come out a little bit more. Now I'm wiping my brush off a little bit more again. I picked up some of that um, that dark, and I did. I don't want to bring that back into my yellow ochre when I when I dip it into a second time. So I I just took some of that out, just wiped it off when I go back in. some up here and I mocked I mocked this up on my iPad I use I like to use an iPad to to mock up some of my my work before I go in and start putting paint down without any idea is this going to work is it's not going to work I like to mock it up first kind of give myself an idea of what it's going to look like
I take a paper towel. Just, I'm just going to soften some of this up. Right here, maybe it's a little darker than I anticipated, and that's fine. And before I go in and do much more of that, I'm going to take my my two inch brush. This is a, a, a natural bristle brush from the uh, from the Bob Ross collection. Um, two inches, and I'm and it's super soft. It's great for blending. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just blend out some of the soften this up. Let's take out some of these brush strokes. I'm going to blend a little bit of that yellow ochre in that in that. I don't know if I want to call it black, but that, that really dark color. And then just wipe off your brush every now and again because you're going to pick up paint. You're going to get it loaded with all the stuff that you're moving around. See, and you'll end up leaving some wisps and streaks maybe that you didn't intend. And, and you know, and that's okay. Like Bob said, that's, you know, happy accidents. Maybe it just turns out pretty cool. I go at it at different angles and just not all the same. Just keep it random. It won't, it'll keep your painting from looking mechanical. Just really light and just fluff, fluff it. Now I want to go into my titanium white and I do want to rinse off my brush. I'm going to get that paint off of there because I'm going to be doing some mixing on the canvas and I don't want to preemptively get my, my white wet. I'd like to keep a pure spot and that pure spot, because I guess a nice amount of white on my brush, that pure spot is going to be like right here. So this is going to be the brightest part. And the reason why I chose this side is because uh, it's, I'll have to back up a little bit so you can see. The reason why I chose this, this bright spot here is because it's directly over this light reflection right here. Part of what bothered me with this painting is it, uh, originally it had this uh, lighter sky all the way across the top and then on the bottom here, it just had to just show the light spot. Now I know that there's a tree here it's gonna be reflecting and covering up part of the, this right here. Uh, but I want it didn't make much sense to me so I want to give it a reason for it to glow on the side of the water and then and once I once I do that I'm going to and I started getting into the into the dark color I just gonna wipe my brush off a little bit before I go back into my white because at the present time I still want that white paint and I'm just twisting See my brush? Oh, you can't see my brush. I'm just twisting my brush like this. I'm just kind of letting it just dance right over. Give me the little shapes, little odd shapes. And then as I run out of paint, I will, I'll blend it off up here just so that it doesn't look like it's just one, one white cloud right there. I want it to kind of blend off and infiltrate these other these other areas to, just to add interest now you see I'm starting to get a little dark so I'm just going to wipe off my brush again Wipe off your brush once you pick up some of that, 
some of that pink. But that cloud just kind of go off, go off the, 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 go off the canvas a little bit. I want to add some more here so that I can kind of mix it up in here. Trying to make these clouds just to look a little bit less ominous while maintaining their contrast. Wipe off my brush. See if we can pick up some of this yellow, on, this yellow ochre on here. Yeah, you see that? That yellow ochre, and then we just mixed up some of that titanium white. We're maintaining those darker values, but now we're picking up a little bit more of that yellow color. Wipe off my, my brush again. See, there's a little bit of a residue on there, and that's that's good. You don't you don't need you don't need a lot. And then I'm just going to smooth this. Now, when you smooth in your white, again, we're working with some a lot of wet, dark colors up there. You're going to pick some up. Uh, you don't want to get it all over your white. So every time you take a couple strokes, just go ahead and wipe your brush off. Another advantage to putting that liquid down on your on your canvas, it makes it really slick and it helps with all of this blending. Just using the corner of my the corner of my brush and just doing a little circular motions right here. Just felt like it was. Uh, this wasn't coming out the way that I wanted it to. So just blending it out a little bit more, softening it. That's pretty good. Now, the last thing that I want to do is I want you to notice there's a little bit of a, of a temperature difference in the color. Maybe we'll talk about that maybe in another video. Uh, but here we've got all this nice, the yellow ochres. We use the burnt siennas and the Prussian blue. And the Prussian blue, uh, unless I'm mistaken, is a warm blue. Okay, so I misspoke. Uh, blues, and as a general rule, are cool, but they do fall on a uh, spectrum from warm to cooler blue. So it's kind of relative. So we have all these warm colors, and then down here, uh, we've got uh, the alizarin crimson. We used the chroma black when we made this, uh, and it was more of the alizarin crimson and thalo green, cool color. So now we've got a warm temperature and a cool temperature going on here and then these things here when we tended it we use more warm colors again so we got this cool swath that's going right through here i'm going to take my yellow ochre and i have a diluted mixture of uh, odorless mineral spirits and linseed oil and i'm going to use that to thin out my yellow ochre i'm going to make this more of a glaze and i'm going to just apply it i'm just using my fan brush but you can use whatever brush you want for this And it's putting a nice thin glaze right over this other black that we had up here. And you can see it's just warming it up just enough to make it, just to bring it all together. And 
And it's okay if you if you bring it right up and cover part of your uh, existing elements. I mean that's that's fine. It's well, if you don't like something, you can just you can just uh, rub it off. That's the beauty of of these oil paintings. Now let me preface all this by saying before you can do something like this, you really want to make sure that your painting is dry, bone dry. Otherwise you, I mean, unless you want that effect, of course, of mixing it on canvas, because that's exactly what will happen. You'll be mixing it with the, with the tones underneath. I want to put some of this on here. I want to show you about rubbing it off. So I'll put some of that on there and it's a little bit dark. Just take a clean towel, see a clean towel, and you can just rub it. Rub it right off if it's too dark for you. Probably still stain. I mean, you probably won't get it all off, but you'll leave a nice, a nice residue behind. See, there's a, a dark part of the tree right here. So as we, in the past, we've, we've talked about value and, and you want your subjects to read. And what I mean by read is you, you want them to be able to be noticed. So you put a dark area like this tree right here, this dark, you want to put it against a lighter area and vice versa. If you've got a lighter area like this tree right here, you want to put it against a dark area. So always try to stair step your story. So like we have dark, we have light, we have dark, we have light, and then we have we have dark, we have light, and on and on up. So try to uh, try to stair step your story. It's just going to help it. It's going to help what you want to matter. It's going to help it to matter. So I'm just looking at this right now. I've, just softening some of the edges. And you can piddle with this at this point until your heart's content, but I think that this looks a whole lot better than, than what it did originally. It's, it's a little bit more interesting right here. Keep in mind of your light source too. Clouds, when you put clouds in, okay, so this is important. When you put clouds in, uh, you have to think of them as a shape. All right, this, think of this, okay, this is your cloud. And if you had your, your light source up here coming this direction, the, the cloud will, or the, the light will obviously hit the edge, right? Maybe. Maybe, maybe some of it part through here, right? As it kind of comes around your, your cloud. Unless you intend your clouds to have additional shapes, like through here, that would come out even, it would come out towards you even more. Don't under, don't light your clouds down here on this side. There's always the exception, of course, if you're talking about bounced light, but it won't be the same as this light. Like if you put white, Like I, I chose a, a little cloud right here. So I'll put white on this side. I don't want to put that same white on this underside over here. That's just not going to make sense. And even if you want to call it bounce light, the light that's being bounced back up is going to be different than, than the light that's being, that's going to hit it initially. So this down here, like if we assume that this green field back here is causing the bounce light to come up, maybe that that bounce light's got more of a yellow tint to it maybe even a green tint, but probably a yellow tint by the time it hits back up here. At least it's not going to be white. It's not going to be that same, that same color of white. That's why I kind of blended this, blended this out a little bit. I, do, I didn't want this cloud to just stand out and just feel like, hey, it's catching this light all the way around it. No, it's not. It doesn't happen. Uh, these things, you don't put clouds in just randomly. Well, I'm sorry, 
I, I, let me rephrase that. You can put clouds in randomly. You don't like clouds randomly. Clouds are lit with a purpose. And it's defined by, by physics and geometry and all that kind of good stuff. You just, you just can't make it. You just can't make it up. And it's, it's great if you want your clouds and sky to be interesting and, and full of drama. And I, I, I do too. But there's a, a certain way that you have to go about making that happen. You just can't. It's not random. It is not. I want to really drive that home. It is not random. Hopefully fix it. Spot a little bit better. Like I said, you can piddle with these things all day. Always find, find something. Just always find something. Okay, let's see what this looks like all zoomed out. All right, that looks that looks much better, I think. Yeah, we we unified we unified the the, the color temperature here. We left this a little bit lighter as the light comes through. I like the I like that glowy kind of effect that's right there, but it's still dark. The value is still dark enough to allow this tree to, to be able to stand forward. And this is all nice and dramatic and dark up here and very contrasting. That looks, I think, a lot better. Okay, I hope you enjoyed everything we went over and that you'll use this information to create something awesome in your own style. You can find inspiration anywhere. Don't be afraid to look. Remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and check out my earlier videos. Leave a comment if you have a question or some feedback or you want to see something specific. I look forward to hearing from you, and I'll see you next time.